Hello and welcome to the National Gallery of Ireland here in Dublin. And I've arrived to see a very exciting and unusual show. It's this one here, Lavinia Fontana, Trailblazer and Rule Breaker. So who was this trailblazer and rule breaker? Well, she was, above all, the daughter of a painter. Uh, her father, Prospero Fontana, was a very successful artist in Bologna at the time, and he it was who gave her the education she needed to become an artist. And this was incredibly rare at the time. And amongst the many things that Lavinia Fontana was, she was one of the first women artists to make a career for herself painting portraits. And that's what you see at the beginning of this show. Lots and lots of wonderful portraits. She was also very good at painting children. And it's probably because of her own experiences. She had an extraordinarily interesting domestic life. Her husband basically stayed at home and looked after the kids, and she bore him 11, yes, 11 children, while well, she went out and painted and wore the trousers in the family. So that was an unusual arrangement, but what it did was it made her, I think, extra sensitive to the atmospheres of domesticity. And no artist before her had painted as many children as she did, and had painted them with this sympathy and understanding of their fragility that I think you get in her best work. My favourite picture of the children here is this unknown fellow, because he reminds me of me. When I was about seven years old, I looked exactly like he does. I wanted to be an art critic. He wants to be some kind of architect, I think, judging by the compass and ruler on his table. But put on a pair of glasses, and I tell you, this is the young Valdemar. So the show is divided into these various sections. Section about Lavinia and her women, section about Lavinia and children. This one is about myth and allegory, another of her specialities. And she painted these rather mysterious pictures with hidden meanings. Even to this day, no one's exactly sure what's going on in them. Some, though, are a little bit more obvious. I mean, she did the story of Judith and Holofernes, which of course is a famous biblical story that was painted much later by Baroque artists, where they liked to show Judith, who was a Jewish heroine, beheading the wicked Assyrian general Holofernes. And quite often in these paintings you see the violence of the moment. But here a rather more noble Judith, who is probably a self-portrait again of Lavinia Fontana, holds up the decapitated head of Holofernes in quite a graceful manner. It's a new tone in art. And then you get to these rather strange, very mannerist nudes that Lavinia Fontana was notorious for painting. I mean, they say she was the first woman artist to paint female nudes. And she brought a certain sly eroticism to her mythological scenes. This is Venus and Mars in their illicit relationship. But look at that hand pressed against Venus's bottom. I'm not sure many male artists would have the nerve to paint that. The final room of the show. In the last stage of her career, Fontana was so successful that the Pope in Rome called her to the Vatican. So she left Bologna and came to Rome, where she produced some of her most ambitious and certainly her largest pictures. This strange nude, that's Minerva, the goddess of wisdom. Except she doesn't look very wise on this occasion. She's getting ready to put on her clothes and her attributes are all around her. But it seems to be more of a picture about this sly mannerist eroticism that you get with Lavinia Fontana. And this is probably her masterpiece biggest picture she ever did. It belongs here to the National Gallery of Ireland in Dublin and it's an extraordinarily interesting picture. What it actually shows is the arrival of the Queen of Sheba at the court of King Solomon. So it's a biblical scene but it doesn't look like it does it? 
That's because Fontana has transposed it to contemporary Ferrara at the time that she was there. And these are the ladies of the court. This is the countess herself and probably the duke acting out these roles of King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. But often with Lavinia Fontana's pictures, you can study them, you can think and think and think about them, but you never quite work out exactly what they're about. And that's certainly true of this. Why is this dwarf here collecting this pearl necklace from the black slave in the corner? Why is this courtly woman pointing at him? Why is he holding a chain and the dog at the other end? Somewhere in the mists of time, the true meaning of this picture has been forgotten. And for a long time, Lavinia Fontana herself was forgotten. But that's all changing. And because of this show, no one will ever be able to forget her again.